It was my first night at Sleeping Giant in Canada. I was all by myself, camping near the forest. My tent was set up on a small hill, with a view of a rocky beach. The sounds of the forest were new and loud, making me feel a bit nervous. I couldn't sleep. The noises of the forest seemed to fill the quiet night. Every little sound, every bird call, made me think of a bad guy hiding in the shadows, instead of just normal animals. I tried to calm myself down, reminding myself that I was in the middle of nature, and these sounds were just a part of it. Just as I was starting to relax, I heard something that made my heart beat fast. Loud footsteps. Twigs breaking. It sounded like something big was moving around outside my tent. I was sure I was about to be in big trouble, all alone in the Canadian woods. Suddenly, there was a loud noise and the sound of rocks falling right outside my tent. I gathered all my bravery, turned on my flashlight and slowly opened the tent door to see what was happening. In the light of my flashlight, I saw a big, clumsy elk that had just slipped down the hill onto the beach in front of me. I breathed a sigh of relief. It was just a harmless animal, probably more scared of me than I was of it. The rest of the night passed without any more scares, but the excitement from the encounter kept me awake until morning. The next few days were calm. I spent my time checking out the trails and enjoying the beauty of the park. The encounter with the elk had added some excitement to my trip, reminding me of how unpredictable nature can be. When it was time to leave, I looked back at the spot where the elk had slipped. The memory made me smile. It had been a scary, but exciting experience. It was a trip that I would remember for a long time, a real adventure in the wild. And even though I was scared at first, I knew I would come back for more. It was a hot summer day when I started my hike in the Great Dividing Range in Australia. It was really hot, but the place was so beautiful that I didn't mind the heat. The range was big and full of rough mountains and green valleys. I didn't bring much with me, just a sleeping bag and a tent cover. I planned to sleep outside under the stars. The first few nights were amazing. The sky was full of stars and it was very quiet, except for some animals making noises at night. But one night, I set up my camp near a tree that was full of caterpillars. They were small, fuzzy, and hairy. They didn't bother me during the day. But at night, they kept crawling on my face. I couldn't sleep well that night. I kept waking up because the caterpillars were tickling my face. Every time I felt one, I would wake up and take it off my face. But another one would crawl on me right after. I was glad when the morning came. Even though it was uncomfortable, I thought it was a weird and interesting experience. It reminded me that nature can be unpredictable and sometimes you have to deal with small problems when you're out in the wild. When the sun came up, I packed my sleeping bag and brushed off the last caterpillars. I looked at the tree one last time. It was full of caterpillars in the morning light. It was a strange sight, but also kind of cool. Feeling excited, I continued my hike, ready for whatever else the great dividing range had for me. The night with the caterpillars was not comfortable, but it was a unique experience that made my trip more interesting. It reminded me that even when things are tough, there's always a good story to tell. After finishing high school, my friends and I decided to walk 50 miles of the Appalachian Trail. We planned to do 12 miles each day for four days. It was a hard trip but we were excited about the adventure. The first three days were tough but fun. We walked all day, looking at the beautiful views and enjoying the quiet of nature. However, the last day was a different story. I woke up when the sun rose with the worst stomach pain of my life. I had to run to the bushes several times, feeling like I was losing my insides. Despite this, we managed to walk the last 12 miles before lunchtime thanks to my urgent need to stay close to a toilet. During our trip, three of us found deer ticks on our bodies. We thought our fourth friend was lucky for not finding any. But as it turned out, he wasn't so lucky after all. A few weeks after our trip, he started feeling sick. He had a fever, headache, and was tired. 
He went to the doctor and was told he had Lyme disease. It turned out that he had a deer tick too, but he just hadn't found it. Despite the challenges, our hiking trip was an experience we'll never forget. It taught us about the beauty and dangers of nature. And even though our friend got sick, he got better after treatment and is now more careful when hiking. This adventure was a reminder that nature is unpredictable and can be tough at times. But with the right precautions and respect for animals, we can enjoy its beauty without harm. It was a trip we'll always remember, not just for the scary moments, but for the lessons we learned and the friendships we strengthened. On the first day, we started our 12-day trip into the Bob Marshall Wilderness. The place was really pretty, and it smelled like pine trees and dirt. On the second day, we saw a mother grizzly bear and her cubs about 40 yards away. We stopped and watched them, feeling both scared and amazed. We got to our next camping spot just as it was getting dark. That night, we heard a loud noise in the water nearby. It was a moose, which was scary but not as bad as a bear. The next day, we found signs that a bear had been near our camp. It was exciting but also a bit scary to know we were camping where bears lived. The days went by quickly as we hiked, set up camp, and enjoyed the wilderness. Each day was a new adventure that made us feel closer to nature. On the eleventh day, we came back to our first camping spot for the last night of the trip. We noticed grizzly bear tracks over our own boot tracks, which reminded us that we were in the wild. That night, we had trouble sleeping. Every little sound seemed louder. We were really tired, but the thought of the grizzly bear kept us awake. When the sun came up on the last day, we packed up our camp for the last time. The trip had been a big challenge, but also a lot of fun. As we headed home, we felt a deep respect for the wilderness and its animals. The trip showed us how beautiful and powerful nature is. It was an experience that left us feeling humble and amazed, and we'll never forget it. I love hiking and living in Washington State. I had some of the best hiking paths in the U.S. One day, I chose to hike the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Mount Rainier National Park. This trail is famous for its amazing views of Mount Rainier and the mountain landscape. The morning was cool and bright as I started my hike alone. The trail was tough, but I was ready. I had my backpack with water, food, and first aid kit. The first part of the hike was through quiet forests. The tall trees were like a comforting roof, their leaves making a soft sound in the wind. As I went higher, the trees changed to open fields. The view was amazing. There were wildflowers everywhere, and Mount Rainier was big and beautiful in the distance. I felt small and alone in the big, beautiful nature. But as the day went on, the weather started to change. Dark clouds came in, and a cold wind started. I walked faster, hoping to finish the trail before the weather got worse. Suddenly, I heard a loud noise. I turned around to see rocks falling down the mountain. My heart was beating fast as I ran, trying to get away from the falling rocks. I found a safe place behind a big rock just in time. When the dust cleared, I saw the trail was blocked by rocks. I was stuck. I started to panic, but I made myself calm down. I remembered the map of the trail I had looked at. There was another way down, but it was longer and more dangerous. With no other choice, I started on the other path. The path was thin and twisty, with a big drop on one side. I had to be careful with every step. As I made my way down the dangerous path, the wind was loud around me, and it started to rain. Hours later, wet and tired, I finally got back to the start of the trail. I felt so relieved when I saw my car parked far away. Even though I was scared and in danger, I had made it out safe. That night, as I sat in my warm house, I thought about what happened. The hike had shown me how powerful and unpredictable nature can be. But it had also shown me how strong and brave I can be. I had faced my fear, and I had made it. And that's a story worth telling. After a tough day of walking, 
we were too tired to reach our planned stop. We decided to camp in a small open space just off the path. The seven of us, all friends, went to our own tents, tired but happy. As I was lying in my tent, the quiet night was broken by the sound of a plane. The sound got louder and louder until it was almost too loud to bear. The peaceful night was replaced by a feeling of fear. Suddenly, the inside of the tent was lit up, as if it was daytime. My friend Eric, who was in the tent with me, was holding on to me and screaming. I curled up, sure that a plane was about to crash into our camp. But as quickly as it had started, the noise stopped. The light went away, and the night was quiet again. We were left in shock, our hearts beating fast. We guessed that it was a military drill, with a plane flying as low as it could through the mountains. The next day, we had another problem. We found a spring with a cover, and a plastic tube coming out of it. We were so thirsty that we drank the water, only to find a big dead lizard in it. It was a harsh reminder of how unpredictable nature can be. We learned this lesson on the Appalachian Trail, in a part of Georgia called Springfield. In the end we made it. We faced problems and overcame them. We felt fear and found bravery. We learned lessons and became stronger. And even though it wasn't a scary story in the usual sense, it was an adventure that we would never forget. It was real, it was intense, and it was ours. That's what made it both scary and amazing. I've always lived in Alaska, a place full of wild nature. I loved the flat-top mountain trail. It was a tough path, but the sights were amazing. The trail had rocks and green plants, with the big mountain always in view. One day, I decided to go for a hike alone. The weather was good, and I was ready. As I started going up, the sound of birds and leaves were my only friends. The trail was hard, with high climbs and thin paths. But I knew it well. I knew every turn. When I got to the middle, I saw the weather changing. Dark clouds started to come, and I felt worried. I thought about going back, but I wanted to keep going. The wind started to blow, and it got cold. I pulled my jacket tight and walked faster. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me. I looked back, but there was nothing. I thought it was just the wind and kept going. As I got close to the top, the noise got louder. I could feel my heart beating fast. I looked back again, and this time, I saw it. A big grizzly bear was on the trail behind me. I was scared, remembering to not look it in the eye and to make myself look big. I started to move back slowly, keeping my eyes on the bear. It watched me, its eyes on me. After a long time, I was far enough away. I turned around and started to run. I didn't stop until I got to the bottom of the mountain. When I looked back, the bear was gone. I felt relieved. I was safe. It was a scary experience, but it reminded me of how strong nature is and how important it is to respect it. That day, I went home with a new respect for the wild and a story I would always remember. The Flat Top Mountain Trail was still my favorite, but I learned to never underestimate how unpredictable nature can be. I've always loved exploring new places. So, when I found out about the Double Nickel Campground in Nebraska, a great place for camping, I decided to go. The campground was on a big highway, near a city called Lincoln. It was a huge place with games like pinball and mini golf, and even swimming pools. I was looking forward to spending a weekend there by myself in a small house, even though it was a bit scary. The day I got there, it was almost night time. The sun was going down and making long shadows over the campground. I could see small houses all around, each one hidden away in private. My house was at the very end, surrounded by big trees. It was a simple house made of logs with a small front porch. The first night was quiet. I spent the evening walking around the campground, enjoying being alone. But when it got dark, I started to feel a bit scared. The sounds of the forest seemed to get louder. I could hear leaves moving, an owl hooting far away, and sometimes a twig would snap. Back in my house, I tried to forget about feeling scared. 
I told myself that I was in a popular campground, not a spooky forest. But when I was in bed, I heard a soft scratching sound, like something was moving across the wooden floor. I sat up quickly, my heart beating fast. The room was very dark, the only light was from the moon outside. I grabbed my flashlight and turned it on, looking around the room. Everything was in its place. The scratching sound had stopped. I thought it must have been a small animal outside, maybe a raccoon. I turned off the flashlight and tried to go back to sleep. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of birds singing. The scary feelings from the night before seemed silly in the daylight. I spent the day walking around the campground, enjoying the outdoors. But when it got dark again, I started to feel scared again. I was sitting on the porch when I saw a shadow moving between the trees. It was too big to be a small animal. I stood up quickly, my heart beating fast. I shouted out, but no one answered. The shadow disappeared, and everything was quiet again. I didn't sleep much that night. Every little sound made me jump. But when morning came, I felt silly for letting my imagination scare me. There were no monsters here, no hidden dangers. Just me, alone in a small house, in the middle of a beautiful campground. On my last day, I packed up my stuff and left the house. As I drove away, I looked back at the campground. It was just as peaceful and beautiful as when I had arrived. The scary noises, the shadow in the woods they were all because I was alone in a new place. In the end, my trip to the double nickel campground was an adventure, a chance to see how brave I could be. It taught me that sometimes, the things we're scared of are just in our minds. And that sometimes, the real adventure is facing those fears and coming out stronger. I lived in Colorado, but I had never been to the Golden Eagle campground before. It's right in the middle of the state, a calm place with lots of mountains, not too far from Colorado Springs. The campground is big, with more than 120 full hookups and 75 electric water hookups. If you love nature you'd love it here, with over 12 miles of hiking trails for everyone. One day, I thought I'd rent a cabin there, just to get some alone time. The cabin was old and simple, made of wood that had been through many winters in Colorado. It was in a quiet part of the campground, surrounded by tall pine trees. The air was fresh and clean, and you could smell the pine and the earthy scent of the nearby trails. The first few days were peaceful. I spent my time hiking, fishing in the nearby stream, and just enjoying the quiet. But after a while, I started noticing weird things. Stuff in the cabin would be moved around, food would disappear, and I would often wake up to the sound of soft scratching against the cabin walls. I thought it was just animals, but it started to make me feel uneasy. One night, the soft scratching sound was louder, like something was in a hurry. I decided to check it out. With a flashlight in hand, I went outside into the cold night. The light didn't show anything strange. But just as I was about to go back, I saw a faint trail of footprints leading into the woods. Curious, I followed the trail. It took me to a small clearing where I found my missing food items, all arranged in a circle. I got a chill down my spine. This wasn't something an animal would do. I rushed back to the cabin, my heart racing. The next morning, I told the campground management about what happened. They seemed surprised but said they would look into it. That night, I stayed up, listening for any sounds. But it was quiet, and eventually, I fell asleep. I was woken up by the sound of laughter. It was a child's laughter, clear and bright, echoing through the quiet night. I ran outside, the cold air stinging my skin. The laughter seemed to be coming from the clearing. As I got closer, I saw a small figure running between the trees, then disappearing into the darkness. The next day, the campground management told me that a family used to live in the area years ago. Their young son would often play in the woods and had a habit of taking food. Sadly, the boy had died in an accident. The family moved away, but people often reported seeing a small figure playing in the woods. I spent the rest of my stay feeling peaceful. The strange things didn't stop, but they didn't scare me anymore. 
Instead, they reminded me of the playful spirit who had once called these woods home. When it was time to leave, I left some food in the clearing, a small gift to the boy who had become my unexpected friend. In the end, my stay at the Golden Eagle campground was not what I had expected. It was spooky, unsettling, and oddly comforting. It reminded me that we're never truly alone, even when we're looking for solitude. I always lived in the busy city of Wyoming, but I decided to take a break and rented a small house at the Norris Campground, one of the best camping spots in the state. The camping spot was right in the middle of Yellowstone National Park, surrounded by tall pine trees. It was a great place for people who love adventures. The small house was old-fashioned, made of logs and had a small front porch. Inside, it was comfortable with a single room that was both a living area and bedroom. A small kitchen was in one corner, and there was a tiny bathroom with just the basic stuff. The house didn't have any modern things, which made it more charming. The first few days were calm. I spent my time checking out the nearby Norris Geyser Basin, one, walking through the thick forest, and enjoying the quiet. The nights were silent, except for the occasional sound of an owl or the noise of leaves. One night, as I was about to fall asleep, I heard a weird noise. It was a low growl, like that of a big animal. I sat up, my heart beating fast. I could hear it moving around outside the house. I held my breath, hoping it would go away. But the growling got louder, and I could hear heavy footsteps coming towards the house. I quickly grabbed the flashlight and shone it through the window. My heart almost stopped when I saw a big grizzly bear sniffing around the porch. I had heard of bears coming into the camping spot, but I had never thought I would see one so close. I knew I shouldn't go outside or make any quick movements that might scare it. I stayed as quiet as possible, watching as the bear sniffed around, its big body casting a scary shadow in the moonlight. After what felt like forever, the bear finally lost interest and walked off into the forest. I let out a sigh of relief, my heart still beating fast from the encounter. The next morning, I told the park rangers about the incident, who promised me that they would check the camping spot more often. I spent the rest of my stay on high alert, but there were no more bear sightings. Despite the scare, my time at the Norris campground was an experience I'll never forget. It reminded me of the beautiful and unpredictable nature. As I packed up to leave, I looked back at the small house one last time, a small building standing strong in the huge wilderness. It was a reminder of my adventure, a story of survival I would remember forever. This March, I went on a hiking and camping trip with some friends. One of them was new to this, a city guy who had never been out in the wild before. When the sun went down, we set up our camp. The air was cool, and the only sound was the occasional rustling of leaves. The new guy noticed something strange there was a lot of dew on the ground, even though it hadn't rained. We turned on our headlamps, the only light we had, and saw the ground was covered in tiny glowing dots, like a starry sky. The new guy was interested, but got scared when I told him the dew was glowing red. I told him to look closer. He realized what was happening and went pale. The dew wasn't dew at all. It was the reflection of our headlamps in the eyes of tons of wolf spiders, hidden on the ground. That night, the new guy learned a few things. He found out why we use hammocks instead of tents, to stay away from the night creatures. He learned that wolf spider eyes glow red in bright light. But most of all, he learned that he didn't like being in the woods at night. When morning came, the new guy, who hadn't slept much, packed up his stuff. He had made it through his first night in the woods, a night he wouldn't forget any time soon. It was a tough way to learn about nature, but it also made him respect the wild and its creatures more. From then on, he would always check around at night, respect the creatures living in the woods, and never underestimate nature. As for me, it was another reminder of why it's important to be prepared, respect nature, and enjoy the surprises that make each hiking trip special. When we were in our early twenties, 
my friend and I loved going on adventures. One bright afternoon, he took some acid and we decided to go for a walk near a fishing lake in the city. The place was in the city, but the lake gave us a feeling of being in the wild, a nice change from the city life. As we walked, the noise of the city slowly faded away, replaced by the sound of leaves rustling and fish splashing in the lake. The acid started to work for my friend, making his senses sharper and the colors around him brighter. We climbed a small hill, and the lake was now out of sight. Suddenly, we heard a scary sound a dog crying. We stopped, the sound still ringing in our ears. Looking over the hill, we saw something that would scare us forever. A man was there, and he was hurting a dog. My friend was so scared, he couldn't move or make a sound. He was stuck in his own thoughts, the acid making his fear worse. I felt a cold fear in my stomach as we sat there, hidden, forced to watch the scary scene. The man finally left, leaving behind the dead body of the dog. We sat there for what felt like forever, the silence was so loud. My friend was white, his eyes wide with shock. The bright colors he had seen earlier had turned into a scary shade. We managed to get up and leave the hill, the image of the man and the dog stuck in our minds. The rest of the walk was a blur, the earlier excitement replaced with a heavy silence. That day changed us. The city walk near the fishing lake was no longer an adventure but a reminder of the cruel thing we had seen. We learned the hard way that not all walks lead to beautiful places, some just show you the hard truths of life. The memory of that day still stays with us, a scary reminder of the bad things that exist in the world. But it also taught us the importance of standing up against such cruelty, a lesson we keep with us till today. The sun had gone down over the peaceful Ray Lakes in California, and night had fallen. Our group, a bunch of sensible hikers, had made camp for the night. We were sitting comfortably around a warm campfire, its light casting long shadows on our faces. The quiet of the night was only broken by the occasional sound of an owl or the rustling of leaves in the wind. Off in the distance, we saw a single headlamp, its light moving up and down as it came down the winding paths that we were to climb the next day. The sight was spooky, and it made us feel uneasy. Why would anyone, especially someone carrying a tent, choose to hike at night? The question was left hanging in the air, adding to the growing tension. We were also worried about something else. We had caught six fish from the lake, one more than the allowed limit. The thought of breaking the rules, even by accident, was bothering us. As the night went on, the headlamp got closer. Finally, the stranger arrived at our camp. He was a tough-looking man, his face showing signs of what seemed like years of living outdoors. He told us he was part of a group that thought the Sierra Club was too right-wing. His goal was unsettling. He wanted to get rid of all the trout in the High Sierra Lakes. He believed that by doing so, the natural balance would be restored, allowing the frogs and mosquitoes to take over again. His words gave us the chills. The thought of such a big change in the ecosystem was scary, and his lack of care for the beauty of the trout was upsetting. After the stranger left our camp, we sat in silence, the only sound being the crackling of the fire. We were left feeling uneasy, like our peaceful hike had been interrupted by a disturbing reality. The peace of the night had been replaced with a sense of dread. The next morning, we packed up our camp, our minds still full of the events of the previous night. As we started our climb up the winding paths, we couldn't help but look back at the lake, its calm surface hiding the chaos that lay beneath. The hike was no longer just a walk through nature, it had become a time to think about our impact on the environment. The stranger's words had stuck with us. We realized that every action, no matter how small, could have a big impact on the world around us. As we reached the top of the winding paths, we took one last look at Ray Lakes. It was a reminder of the beauty of nature and the responsibility we have to protect it. The experience had been unsettling but it had also been eye-opening. We had set out on a simple hike, but we had come back with a deeper understanding of our place in the world. The journey had been scary, but it had also been really meaningful, and that made all the difference.
When I was 15, I was thumbing a ride home on the Huan Highway in Tasmania. The sun was going down, and the road was getting dark. I was in my soccer uniform, with Hobart Juniors, written big on the front and back. My aunt couldn't pick me up from practice because something came up at her job. I was alone, hoping someone would stop and give me a lift. A taxi stopped. The driver, a man who looked like he was in his forties, asked if I needed a ride. I didn't think twice and got in, happy that someone had stopped. But then things got bad. He offered me three hundred dollars for something I didn't want to do. I was shocked, scared, and didn't know what to do. I was just a kid trying to get home. About fifteen minutes into the ride, he did something terrible to me. I was scared out of my mind, not understanding what was happening. Then he pushed me out of his taxi, threw forty dollars and five dollar bills at me. I was left alone, shaking and scared, on a dark road, barely dressed and far from home. I remember it was really late, maybe midnight or 1 a.m. I remember seeing Christmas lights in the distance which seemed so out of place compared to what I had just gone through. I remember the cold wind on my skin, my ruined dress, and the awful memory that I'll never forget. From that day on, I never trusted taxi drivers who stopped to offer rides. If I didn't call you, you can keep driving. I've heard scary stories about strange Uber drivers since then, and I realize I was lucky. I wasn't hurt badly, I wasn't robbed. Just a ruined dress, a terrible memory, and a hard lesson learned. Even though it was a horrible experience, it made me stronger. It taught me to be careful, to trust my gut, and to stand up for myself. It's a memory I wish I didn't have, but it's part of my past that made me who I am today. And because of that, I'm not just a survivor, but a fighter. I've always loved exploring. Living in Washington state, I had some of the best hiking paths in America right at my doorstep. One day, I chose to hike the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Mount Rainier National Park. The trail was famous for its amazing views of Mount Rainier and the mountain landscape. It was a sunny day, and the trail looked welcoming. I started my hike in the morning, with a backpack full of what I needed and a lot of excitement. The trail was tough but pretty. The path wound its way through quiet forests, river valleys, and high meadows. Seeing Mount Rainier, which is 14,410 feet tall, reaching up into the clouds was an awesome sight. As I went further along the trail, the weather started to change. The sky, which had been clear, was now full of dark clouds. I felt a bit worried, but I chose to keep going, hoping to find a safe spot before the weather got worse. Suddenly, I heard a loud noise echoing through the mountains, followed by a rumbling sound. My heart was beating fast as I realized what was happening a landslide. I could see a cloud of dust in the distance. I felt scared, but I knew I had to stay calm. I quickly looked around and saw a big rock nearby. I ran towards it, hiding behind it just as the landslide hit the trail. I could hear rocks and dirt hitting the other side of the rock. After what seemed like forever, the noise finally stopped. I carefully looked out from behind the rock. The trail I had been on was completely covered by the landslide. But I was still alive. I spent the night behind the rock, too pumped up to sleep. When the sun started to rise, I began the hard journey back, making my way through the landslide and finding a new path. Finally, after hours of hard hiking, I saw the start of the trail again. I felt a wave of relief. I had made it through a scary experience, but it had taught me a valuable lesson about how unpredictable nature can be and how important it is to be prepared. Even though I had been scared, I knew I would go hiking again. After all, I couldn't resist the call of the wild. But I would always remember that day on the Burroughs Mountain Trail, the day when a simple hike turned into a struggle to survive. It was 1 a.m. and I was driving in the dark through the Poconos, going from New Jersey to East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. The road was empty, and all I could hear was my car and the sound of leaves blowing in the wind. Suddenly, my car lights showed a person in scrubs walking on the side of the road. 
I felt cold. What was someone doing out here, all alone, at this time? I slowed down, thinking I should see if they were okay. But as I got closer, I blinked, and they were gone. I quickly looked in my car's mirror, but there was no one. Just an empty road lit up by my car lights. I felt scared. It must have been my eyes playing tricks, I thought, trying to get rid of the scary feeling. I kept driving, but the image of the person in scrubs stayed with me, making the rest of my drive feel weird. When I finally got to East Stroudsburg, the first light of the day was starting to show. The town was quiet, everyone was still asleep. I parked my car and sat for a bit, enjoying the quiet. The image of the person in scrubs was still in my mind. It was probably just my imagination messing with me in the middle of the night. But the scary feeling stayed. I got out of the car, the cool morning air hitting my face. I looked around, half expecting to see the person in scrubs again. But there was no one. Just a quiet town, waking up to a new day. As I walked towards where I was going, I couldn't help but look back at the road I had driven. It was just a road, like any other. But in the middle of the night, it had turned into something else. Something that would stay with me long after I left the Poconos. In the end, it wasn't about the person in scrubs or the empty road. It was about the drive, the unknown, and the stories we tell ourselves to make sense of it all. And as the sun came up, getting rid of the night's darkness, I knew this was one drive I would never forget. I've always loved exploring, and living in Alaska gave me lots of chances to do that. One of my favorite places to go was the Flattop Mountain Trail, a tough but fun hike near Anchorage. It's the most popular mountain to climb in the state, and it's really tall 3,510 feet. One day, I decided to hike it by myself. The morning was cool and bright as I started my climb. The trail was rough, with lots of rocks and tree roots in the way. The air smelled like pine trees and wet dirt, and all I could hear was the sound of my boots on the rocks. As I got higher, there were fewer trees and more bushes and wildflowers. The view was amazing, with the whole of Alaska spread out around me. I could even see Anchorage far away, looking tiny against the big mountains and forests. But as the day went on, the weather started to change. Dark clouds came in, covering the sun and making everything look dark and scary. The wind started to blow, making the leaves rustle and making me feel cold. I knew I should go back, but I really wanted to keep going. I was nearly at the top, and I wanted to get there before the storm did. But as I kept going, the trail got steeper and more dangerous. My heart was beating fast as I tried to avoid slipping on the wet rocks and narrow paths suddenly. There was a flash of lightning, followed by a loud thunderclap. It started to rain making the trail muddy and slippery. I slipped and fell, and my heart was racing as I tried to find something to hold on to. I managed to get up and keep going, but the storm didn't stop. The wind was blowing hard, throwing the rain into my face and making it hard to see. I was wet and cold, but I was determined to get to the top. Finally, after what felt like forever, I made it to the top. I stood there, wet and cold from the wind and rain, looking out over the stormy landscape. It was scary, but also kind of beautiful. I felt proud of myself for making it to the top despite everything. Just as quickly as it had started, the storm ended, leaving a clear sky full of stars. I started to make my way back down the mountain, feeling tired but happy. It was a hike I would never forget, a reminder of how powerful nature is and how strong I can be. And so, I got back home, safe and sound, with a great story to tell and a new appreciation for the beauty of Alaska. The Flattop Mountain Trail had been a real challenge, but in the end I had won. I booked a cabin at the Chalk Creek Campground in Nathrop, Colorado. The campsite was right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains and was really beautiful. There were places for RVs and tents by the side of the stream, which was both peaceful and exciting. The campsite was big, with lots of tents and RVs spread out all over. The cabin I booked was a small, old building made of wood that had been there for many winters in Colorado. 
It was surrounded by tall pine trees and you could hear the sound of the leaves in the wind. The air was fresh and smelled like pine and the nearby creek. When the sun started to go down, I went for a walk around the campsite. The paths were well used, going through the forest and next to Chalk Creek. The sound of the water flowing was always there as I walked, which was really calming. When it got dark, the sky was full of stars. Back at the cabin, I started a fire, and the light from the flames made shadows on the walls. The only sound was the fire. When I went to bed, the wind started to blow really hard outside and the trees were making noise. The cabin was making noise too, which was a bit scary in the middle of the night. I stayed awake, listening to all the sounds outside. All of a sudden, there was a loud noise in the cabin. My heart was beating fast as I got out of bed. I took a flashlight and carefully went outside. A big pine tree had fallen down, but it missed the cabin. I felt relieved when I realized that it was just the wind that made the tree fall down. When the sun came up, I was amazed by how powerful and beautiful nature is. The fallen tree was a reminder of that. When I was packing to leave, I looked at the cabin and the campsite one last time. Even though I got scared in the night, staying at the Chalk Creek campground was an experience I'll never forget. I've always liked being outside. So, when I got the chance to rent a cabin at the Bear Canyon campground in Montana, I jumped at it. The campsite was right in the middle of the mountains, with an amazing view of the rough landscape. The campground was big, with lots of land and cabins spread out for privacy. The cabin I rented was simple but cozy, with a small porch that looked out on a thick forest. The first few days were quiet. I spent my time walking on the trails, fishing in the stream nearby, and enjoying being alone. One evening, when I was coming back from a walk, I noticed something weird. My cabin door was a bit open. I was sure I had locked it. I carefully opened the door. Everything looked okay. I brushed it off, thinking I might have forgotten to lock it. The next day, I found my food all over the place. This was weird because I had put them away properly. I cleaned up, thinking some animal might have done it. On the third night, I was woken up by a strange noise. It sounded like soft steps outside my cabin. I held my breath, listening. The steps seemed to go around the cabin, getting louder then quieter. I gathered my courage to look out the window but saw nothing. The next morning, I found big, strange tracks around my cabin. They didn't look like any animal tracks I had seen. I started to feel scared but I decided to stay one more night, hoping to figure out what was going on. That night, the steps came back, this time with a low growl. I could hear something scratching against the cabin wall. I was really scared. I grabbed my flashlight and opened the cabin door quickly, ready to face whatever was out there. To my surprise, I found a big, confused bear, its foot stuck in a hidden trap. It was the cause of the strange things happening. I called the local animal rescue, who came quickly and safely freed the bear, making sure it was okay before letting it go back into the wild. The rest of my stay was calm. I realized that the real world could be scarier than any ghost story, but it was also a reminder of the respect we need to have for nature and its animals. The Bear Canyon campground will always be a special place for me, not just for its beautiful view, but for the adventure and the lesson it taught me. I've always loved going on adventures. So, I decided to go on a trip by myself to Cloudland Canyon State Park in Georgia. The park is famous for its pretty cliffs, waterfalls, and forests. The day I got there, the sun was going down. It made the whole park look nice and warm. I had rented a small cabin in the middle of the woods. It was a nice little place with one room and a small kitchen. The cabin was surrounded by big trees. Their leaves were moving in the soft wind. When it got dark, the forest started to make all sorts of sounds. The crickets were making noise, the owls were making noise, and the leaves were moving. I sat on the porch, enjoying the quietness of the wild. But as time went on, the forest became very quiet. The usual night sounds seemed to have gone away. 
I started to feel a bit scared. I decided to go back inside my cabin. Once inside, I locked the door and checked all the windows. The cabin was safe. I tried to calm myself down. I told myself that I was just not used to being in a new place. Suddenly, I heard a soft noise outside. My heart started beating fast. I looked through the window, but it was too dark to see anything. The noise came again, louder this time. It sounded like something heavy was being moved around. I picked up a flashlight and got the courage to go outside. The light from the flashlight showed a big tree branch that had fallen near the cabin. I felt relieved. It was just a branch, not some scary thing hiding in the dark. I spent the rest of the night inside, listening to the sounds of the forest come back. By morning, the fear from the night before felt like a far-off memory. The sun came up, chasing away the darkness. The forest was beautiful again, not scary. My trip to Cloudland Canyon State Park was quite an adventure. It taught me that sometimes, our fears are just like shadows in the dark, made bigger by our imagination. And when the sun comes up, those fears go away, leaving behind only the beauty of what's real. The sun had just gone down and we, a bunch of friends, set up our camp for the night in Aravapa Canyon, Arizona. The air was fresh, and the quiet of the wild was only broken by the occasional sound of leaves moving. We were far away from any town or city, the only people in this huge wild area. As it got dark, we gathered around the campfire, sharing stories and laughs. Suddenly, a scary sound echoed through the canyon. It was a deep growl followed by the scared sound of a sheep. The echoes bounced off the tall cliffs, creating a spooky, ghost-like sound that gave us goosebumps. A mountain lion had caught a sheep on the canyon wall above us. We lay there, still in our sleeping bags, listening to the creepy sounds of the wild. It hit us we weren't alone in this wild area. The fear was real, and the only thing that made us feel a bit safer was the small gun one of us had brought. We moved closer to him, the cold metal of the gun reminding us of how exposed we were. The night went by slowly, every sound made louder by the quiet of the canyon. As the sun came up, we packed up our stuff, the relief of making it through the night clear in our quick actions. On our way out, we met a park ranger. We told her what happened, and she told us about the 24 known lions in the area, which was only 30 square miles. She said that big horned sheep had recently been brought back into the canyon and the lions were doing well. The thought of the lions having a great time was unsettling, but it was a harsh reminder of how nature works. The ranger mentioned plans to reduce the number of lions when the park was closed, a necessary step to keep the balance of nature. The walk back to the car was filled with a feeling of unease, but also a new respect for the wild. The experience was a strong reminder of our place in the big picture we were just visitors in the lion's home. As we drove away, the sounds of the previous night still echoed in our ears, a scary memory that would stay with us forever. This trip was a proof of the raw and tough nature of the wild. It was a humbling experience, a reminder of the respect we must have for these wild places. The wild is not our playground, but a home to many animals, each playing their part in the circle of life. We left Aravapa Canyon with a story to tell, a story of fear, respect, and survival in the heart of the wild. It was a sunny day when I started my walk in Dipikil. The woods were full of nature's sounds, and the air smelled like pine trees. I had a small lunch with me, which included some wild mushrooms I found earlier. As I went further into the forest, I decided to take a break and eat my lunch. The mushrooms tasted really good. But soon after I finished eating, I started feeling weird. Everything around me seemed more intense, and the forest felt spooky. Suddenly, I saw a small animal. It had a hard shell, a long nose, and small eyes. My heart was beating fast because I realized it was an armadillo. But that couldn't be right. Armadillos don't live here. I was scared when the animal started coming towards me. I could hear the leaves rustling and twigs breaking under its weight. I was stuck in place, thinking about what this animal could do. 
Just when I was about to run away, the animal made a sound. A bark. I blinked, and the armadillo was gone. Instead, there was a small dog, wagging its tail and looking at me with friendly eyes. I felt relieved when I understood what happened. The mushrooms I ate must have made me see things that weren't there. I laughed nervously, petting the dog as my heartbeat slowed down. From that day on, I always double-checked my food before eating it in the wild. This experience reminded me of how powerful nature is, and how important it is to respect it. Even though it was scary, it was also a good lesson. I'll always remember the day I thought a dog was an armadillo. A couple of years back, I chose to go on a lone hike up NT Esther after successfully reaching the top of Whiteface. The path to Esther was thick with trees, their branches stretching out like bony fingers, making me feel alone in a way that was both spooky and fascinating. The path was well used, showing that many hikers had walked it before me. Even though it looked welcoming, it was impossible to leave the path. I tried, but the thick plants and steep slopes made it too hard. As I climbed higher, the air got chillier, and a voice broke the quiet of the wild. It was gentle, like a mother's saying, Ready or not, here I come. I stopped, my heart beating fast. There were other hikers that day, so I thought a family was playing a game somewhere on the path. I kept climbing, the voice still in my head. Not long after, I met a group of hikers coming back down. I told them about the voice, but they looked at me confused. None of them had heard it, and none of them had a voice that matched the one I heard. I brushed it off, thinking the family must be behind me, their laughter and talking carried away by the wind. When I reached the top, I took a moment to catch my breath, the wide view taking away what little breath I had left. I waited, expecting to see the family come from the path, but no one came. The top was empty, except for me and the whispering wind. Feeling uneasy, I started to go back down. The path was as empty as it was on my way up. It hit me then there was no family. The voice I had heard, the game of hide and seek, it didn't make sense. The only explanation that made sense was a family hiking miles of mountain path, taking the Esther side path, playing hide and seek on this straight path, only to turn back just 20 minutes from the top. But that seemed very unlikely. The hike back down was filled with unease. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, made my heart race. But I saw no one. I was alone. As I finally stepped off the path, I felt a sense of relief. The voice, the empty path, the empty top it was an experience that would stay with me, a spooky reminder of the mysteries that the wild holds. In the end, the mountains keep their secrets well. And maybe, some things are better left unknown. As for me, the memory of that hike, the voice in the wild, serves as a reminder of the respect we must have for nature and its wild, unpredictable parts. It was a hike like no other, a story to tell, a mystery unsolved. And as I look back, I realize sometimes, the most real experiences are the ones that leave us with more questions than answers. I've always loved exploring. Living in the US, I had the chance to see some really cool and tough paths. One day, I chose to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. It's a super long 2,650 mile trail that starts from the border of Mexico and California and ends at the border of Canada and Washington. The trail was as pretty as it was scary. It went through big deserts, grassy fields, snowy mountains, huge forests, clear lakes, volcanic mountains, and open hills. The different types of places were amazing. One day, while I was hiking alone, I ended up in a thick, dark forest. The tall trees blocked most of the sunlight, making long, spooky shadows on the path. The only sounds were the leaves moving and sometimes, the sound of an owl. I felt a shiver, not because it was cold, but because it was so quiet. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me. I looked back, but there was nothing there. I thought it was just the wind and kept going. But the noise followed me, getting louder and closer. My heart was beating fast as I walked faster. Then, 
All of a sudden, a big, dark shape ran across the path in front of me. I stopped, holding my breath. It was a bear, a huge animal with a thick, furry coat. It stopped, sniffed the air, then walked off into the forest, disappearing as fast as it had shown up. I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. That was close. Too close. But I was safe. I kept going, my heart still beating fast but now with a new respect for the wild, beautiful nature of the trail. The rest of my hike was quiet, but I kept thinking about the bear. It was a strong reminder of the wild, unpredictable nature of the wilderness, a sign of the excitement and danger that comes with exploring new places. When I finally reached the end of the trail, I looked back at the path I had walked. I had faced my fears, survived a close call, and come out stronger. The Pacific Crest Trail had tested me, pushed me, and in the end, changed me. And for that, I was thankful. It was a normal day in the Pacific Northwest. The air was fresh and I could smell the pine trees. I was walking on a quiet trail with my dog, Bella. We loved this trail because it was peaceful and had beautiful views. We went off the main path and found a pretty spot where the sun was shining through the trees. I wanted to take a picture of Bella and me, so I set up my phone on a rock. As I was getting the camera ready, I suddenly felt like someone was watching us. I looked around and saw a man standing still, looking at us through the thick trees. Bella, who is usually friendly and calm, was growling and barking at the man. This was not like her. I wanted the man to know that I saw him so I said hello loudly. He didn't answer, but walked away on a different path. I watched him go up a hill until he was small in the distance. But then, he stopped and turned back towards us. My heart was beating fast as he came back down the path. He walked under a small wooden bridge the only way back to my car. I had to decide, should I go deeper into the woods or cross the bridge where the man might be hiding? I chose to face the situation. I had my phone ready to call for help if I needed to. Bella was still barking, her growls echoing in the quiet woods. We ran across the bridge, my heart beating as fast as our steps. When we got to the car, I looked back at the bridge. It was empty. The man was gone. I felt relieved and thankful for Bella's protective behavior. Maybe the man didn't mean to scare us, but his staring made me feel uneasy. As a woman, I've learned to trust my feelings. That day, they told me something wasn't right. I drove away from the quiet trail, feeling thankful for my brave dog, Bella. From that day on, I promised myself to always be alert and aware of what's happening around me, even if it seems safe. After all, it's better to be safe than sorry. I've always loved exploring, especially living in the beautiful state of Alaska. One day, I chose to hike the Flattop Mountain Trail, a well-known and tough trail famous for its amazing views. The morning was fresh and bright as I started my walk. The path was a mix of stony ground and rich plants, with the impressive Alaskan mountains in the background. The path was steep, and it got rougher the higher I went. As I went up, the wind started to blow bringing with it the cold Alaskan air. The once bright sky was now cloudy, and I started to feel a bit worried. I was alone, surrounded by the huge open space. Suddenly, I heard a noise from the nearby bushes. My heart was beating fast as I turned around, only to see a big grizzly bear coming out of the plants. I stood still, remembering what I'd read about meeting bears, don't look them in the eye, move away slowly. I did just that moving carefully and slowly. The bear watched me, its eyes never leaving me as I kept moving away. After what seemed like forever, I was far enough away. The bear, no longer interested, walked back into the forest. Feeling relieved, I carried on with my hike, the meeting with the bear adding a touch of reality to my adventure that I hadn't expected. The rest of the hike was quiet, and I reached the top just as the sun was going down. The view was amazing, all of Alaska laid out in front of me. As I went down, I felt proud. I had faced my fears, survived a potentially dangerous meeting, and finished a tough hike. 
The adventure was scary, but it was also exciting. It reminded me of why I loved hiking the excitement, the unexpected, the bond with nature. Back at home, I thought about my adventure. It was a story I would tell over and over, a proof of the unpredictability and beauty of nature. The Flattop Mountain Trail had given me an adventure I would always remember, a story as real as the Alaskan wilderness itself. As the sun was going down, my husband, our friend, and I started a walk on a quiet path in eastern Washington. The only sounds were our shoes on the rocks and the occasional sound of leaves moving in the wind. We found an old, empty house. It was tall, the walls looked old, and there was a stone fireplace in the middle. We went inside because we were curious, but the air felt heavy and weird. We felt uncomfortable and our skin prickled. We left quickly, still feeling strange. Further along the path, we saw another house in the distance. It looked like it was still in good shape, with a roof and everything. We were excited to check it out. But as we got closer, the house seemed to disappear, like a mirage. When we got to where it should have been, all that was left were wooden beams. We were confused and couldn't explain what we had seen. We all saw the house, but then it was gone. The path was full of different feelings. Some parts were noisy, with lots of sounds from nature, while others were very quiet. It was creepy, the big changes in the feeling were hard to understand. Near the end of the path, there were new trees growing, making it feel crowded. Even though we had walked two miles, it felt like we were going in circles, everything looked the same. We started to feel paranoid, like someone was watching us. I was scared to look back. It felt like someone was staring at us. We all felt the change and without saying anything, we started to walk faster, almost running back to our car. The path made us feel scared. There was something there, something we couldn't explain. Later, I talked to another person who had walked on the same path. They also felt the strange feelings, so it wasn't just us. I still get chills when I think about that walk. The house that disappeared, the big changes in feeling, the feeling of being watched it all felt too real. It was a reminder that sometimes, there are things in the world that we can't understand. And sometimes, it's better to not try to solve those mysteries. It was the fifth day of our adventure in Grand Gulch. My parents and I were tired but happy as we tried to leave the canyon. We knew it wouldn't be easy because the path was barely visible. But as we started climbing, we realized we were lost. Everything looked different, and we couldn't find the path we thought we knew. Feeling worried, we looked around, trying to figure out where we were. We knew the general direction we needed to go, so we started walking. The small pools of water we had used in the canyon were now far below us, and we had to save our water as much as we could. When it got dark, we found a place to rest under a pine tree. We ate our last few energy bars, the taste of chocolate, and oats a small comfort in the big, open desert. We stayed close together for warmth, as the cold desert night was making us feel chilly. The next morning, we started walking again, feeling heavy but determined. After a while, we saw a faint road. It was like a lifeline, becoming clearer as we kept walking. Seeing the road made us hopeful. We knew we had left a backup bike somewhere along this road for emergencies. When we found the bike, a rainstorm started. My stepdad got on the bike, leaving me and my mom to walk. The rain was a blessing in disguise, helping us quench our thirst. But as the rain got heavier, we started worrying about our ride. After what felt like forever, we reached the parking lot. It was empty except for our van. We saw my stepdad completely wet, trying to start the van but the battery was dead. He decided to ride through the thick mud to the main road, hoping to find someone to help. Hours passed. Just when we were starting to lose hope, a ranger who was patrolling the area found us. He arranged for a tow truck and took us to Blanding, Utah. We spent the night there, getting the van fixed. Looking back, it was a scary experience, especially for me as an 11-year-old. But it also taught me important lessons about being strong 
being resourceful, and how unpredictable nature can be. It's a memory that I'll never forget, a reminder of the time when we faced the wilderness and came out stronger. I recall the summer we went camping at Rock Island, Wisconsin. Getting to Rock Island isn't simple. It needs a boat ride from Door County to Washington Island, and then another boat to Rock Island. The island is basic and far off, with a lot of history that includes three different graveyards and the leftovers of buildings from the first people who lived there. On a clear night, my husband and I chose to look at the stars. We were heading to a field about a quarter mile from where we were camping. The path there took us past one of the island's graveyards. As we were halfway to the field, a heavy fog started to come in, covering everything in a spooky mist. Even with the fog, we decided to keep going. That's when I saw a pair of glowing eyes far away. My heart was beating fast as I asked my husband to point his torch in that direction. To our shock, three to four more pairs of eyes appeared, glowing in the growing fog. We were scared and started running back to our campsite. The rush made us not care about the risk of falling or bumping into something in the thick fog. We got back to our campsite out of breath and scared, the glowing eyes still fresh in our minds. When we calmed down, we found out that the island has a lot of foxes. These animals, brave and curious, like to roam near the campsites at night. It was these foxes that had come to visit as we were heading out. The rest of our time on the island was calm, but the memory of that foggy night, the glowing eyes, and the sudden understanding of our surprise visitors will always stay with us. It was a strong reminder of how, even in the most peaceful places, nature can quickly turn into an exciting, if not scary, adventure. I went camping in northern Alberta a place famous for its cold winters rather than its summer nights. The campsite was a small one, with trailers parked near the entrance and tents set up towards the back. I was the only one bold, or maybe silly enough, to sleep in a tent. The day had been full of hiking and exploring the wild. When night came, the campsite became a peaceful place, the only noises were the occasional sound of leaves moving and the far-off call of an owl. I got into my tent, my body tired and needing sleep. Just as I was about to fall asleep, a noise woke me up. It was a soft, wet noise like something licking its lips. It was very close, right next to my head. My heart was beating fast. The tent was set up on a gravel area, so you'd think I'd hear something coming. But there was nothing, just that creepy noise. I was scared, but I made myself stay calm. I grabbed my phone, put in my earphones, and played my music loud. Hall and Oates filled my ears, their familiar songs giving me some comfort in the face of the unknown. If I was going to be eaten, at least I'd go out listening to good music. The night seemed to last forever, every sound of the wind, every crunch of gravel seemed louder in the quiet. I kept my eyes closed tight, my body still, my breathing shallow. The music kept playing, a source of comfort in the darkness. When morning came, I finally let myself relax. I opened the tent, half expecting to see some scary creature waiting outside. But there was nothing. Just the empty campsite, the trailers in the distance, and the rising sun coloring the sky with shades of orange and pink. I packed up my stuff, my body heavy with tiredness. As I left the campsite, I couldn't help but look back at the spot where my tent had been. There was nothing there no sign of the fear that had taken hold of me the night before. But as I drove away, I couldn't get rid of the feeling of unease. The memory of that noise, that wet, lip-smacking noise, would stay with me long after the trip was over. It was a reminder of the unknown, of the fear that comes with it, and of the strange comfort found in a song played in the middle of the night. It was a camping trip I would never forget.